clinical biochemistry departments has the highest number of blood testing compared to other departments in the lab. These 20 items of pre-analytical errors are mainly related to biochemistry departments. So let's start with short sample. Short sample mainly related to difficult to bleed patients, such as elderly patients with fragile veins, neonates, children, especially obese ones, and other adults with difficult veins. So the flip might try one of these practices or maybe all of them, such as smaller needle gauge, prolonged tight tourniquet, excessive fist clinching, excessive tabbing and rubbing to the vein puncture site. Please don't do that because this will cause hemolysis, affects result quality and hurts patients. The more knowledge, the less mistakes. So let's understand what happened when we use these practices. First, smaller needle gauge. Needle gauge varies from 16 the biggest to 25 the smallest. For blood collection, needle range varies from 19 to 23. Standard needle gauge for adult is 21 and for children is 23. Just for your information, a study found that small needles, 25 gauge or smaller, were associated with statistically significant increase in serum potassium and other constituents due to hemolysis. Also, small needle gauge are associated with increased in clotting, occlusion, and test result variation due to blood slow flow rate. Since we are talking about needle gauge, it is worth mentioning that large needle gauge, a greater than 19, may cause hemolysis too due to turbulence from increased non-laminar blood flow. Therefore, it is important to match the needle gauge to the vein size. Make sure to put needle facing upward. If you, by mistake, put it downward, what will happen when you start a draw, a withdraw blood Instead of withdrawing blood, you will suck the wall of the vein, causing a blockage and no blood collected. Finally, the angle of the needle should be 30 degree with the surface of the arm. Second, prolonged tight tourniquet. When tourniquet applied 2 to 3 minutes, this will lead to an increase in intracapillary pressure and hypoxia of the vessel wall leading to increase the rate of passage of water and small molecules from the lumen into the surrounding interstitial fluid, leaving behind large molecules and cells. So let's talk about the ideal usage of tourniquet in terms of position, time and pressure. Tourniquet should be about 7.5 to 10 cm away from selected vein puncture site. In terms of time, within one minute. If you have a patient, you, it's difficult to identify and select the right side to do the vein puncture and you need more than time, fair enough, apply the tourniquet, select the, the site carefully and then release the tourniquet, let the patient rest, let the blood flow for two minutes before reapplying and then withdraw the blood. Tourniquet pressure used between 40 and 60 mm of mercury. The maximum you can go is 60, the ideal is 40. Finally, it's worth remember 25% of tourniquet is contaminated with methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus and this is mainly due to lack of hand hygiene in the, on the part of the phlebotomist or reuse of contaminated tourniquet. Best option if it's available to use disposable tourniquet. If that option not available, then make sure to wipe a tourniquet with alcohol and make sure to have it clean. Let's talk about fisty clinching. When we say excessive fisty clinching, how many is excessive? Studies showed that six consecutive times before vein puncture is enough to cause false result for several analytes. Fistic lynching is one of the common pre-analytical error and we will talk in details as we, are, we have it in our list. 
Meantime, we just need to know how many is excessive. Finally, excessive tabbing and rubbing to the vein puncture site. Excessive tabbing and rubbing to the vein puncture site can cause first tissue destruction and this may cause the release of intracellular components such as potassium and enzyme. It can be painful to the patient. It may form a hematoma in patients with fragile veins, especially elderly one, or patients on blood anticoagulant medication. This is a real example for a difficult to bleed patients and the phleb tried her best and she managed to get just little blood. The patient um, had so many tests requested that day. So she thought it's better to divide the blood into two tubes and then let the lab figure it out. Please don't do that because underfolded tube by itself is one of the pre-analytical error. And for your information, we can't mix the serum of those two, two tubes in order to do the test. As you can see, the level of hemolysis already varies in these two tubes and result will vary as well. It's better off to put all the blood that you get, even if it's little, in one tube and we will see which tests we are able to do if there is any chance to do any. Otherwise, we are, will ask for recollect. Now let's talk about the tips how to manage those uh, difficult uh, situations. First, be patient and take your time. And remember, those patients, especially with difficult veins one, they know they have difficult veins and they come to you with level of anxiety higher than others. So make sure to comfort them and take your time to make the right decision where to do the puncture and withdraw the blood. It will be a great relief to the patient when you make the right decision and you get the blood. In this case, the patient will always come to you because you are the best. If you used any prolonged or tight tourniquet or fist clenching, identify the puncture site and release tourniquet for two minutes before reapplying again. Finally, use a pediatric tube or ask the lab for their smaller bottles. We have reduced levels of all the EDTA gel, need less blood to, uh, to get a decent result. Now let's talk about the translumination device or vein finder. Let's watch this video together. So that's a laser that's reacting to hemoglobin that are in the peripheral veins. And we light them up so we can start IVs and do blood draws. And here's the machine. That is so cool. As the AccuVein vein visualization device. Sweet. It is amazing as you can see. You can see exactly the size of the vein and then you can match the right size of the needle to use. Uh, by the way, it is not a laser. It is infrared and it is part of the process of making the, the whole phlebotomy process fully automated. I'd like to recommend you to watch this video as a good example for routine blood draw from Auckland University School of Health of Science. I will put the link below this video. If you have any question, comments, feedback or experience as a patient or as a phleb, it will be great to hear from you in the comment section below the video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe and don't forget to hit that little bell so you won't miss the coming video and I will talk about the partially spun sample and unspun samples. Meantime, wish you a great day. Bye bye for now.